Hi guys, greetings from Bulgaria. I'm Anton, and here we are for the late, for the last video from the our Selenium 4 series. Um, let me share my screen. It was a long journey, and in our uh, course about Selenium 4, we learned uh, many things. Uh, if you missed some of the videos, uh, check them out. They are all uh, already published. First, we discussed uh, how to upgrade from Selenium 3 to Selenium 4 and discussed the many differences that come with the new release. Then we talked about the relative locators, uh, one of the new most exciting features of Selenium 4. Then we discussed in many details how you can use the new initialization script logic for instead of you know running scripts um, every time on every single page. Uh, and uh, I showed you there how you can highlight elements on action, uh, how you can extend the driver, uh, also how you can pop up notifications. Then we discussed in many details again, uh, the new Selenium ID next generation that it's uh, available for, for Chrome, not only Firefox, and the new architecture of Selenium Grid. In the fifth video, we talked about geolocation testing, localization, and many other more advanced uh, types of testing, and especially how you can integrate them uh, into the cloud. Um, and as a continuation to the topic, uh, we reviewed the different ways how you can uh, test responsive applications. Um, and of course, uh, it's an important topic not only to write the test, but be able to troubleshoot them. So um, in many of the half of the videos, actually, we were talking about Selenium 4 integration with Chrome Developer Tools protocol and the new bi-directional APIs. Um, so I, I showed you how you can uh, use them to troubleshoot tests, to uh, you know configure the network traffic capturing uh, the traffic in a really detailed video about networking. And it's partially connected, how to capture performance metrics. What does it mean one uh, website to be fast? Because there are many different uh, metrics about it, not just uh, the speed. Um, and uh, check it out. There. It, it was really the doubt and we talked about progressive web applications. And in the last video from the series, we discussed uh, network emulation and why you need to care about it. Uh, if you uh, want to get more about, uh, to get more uh, videos uh, like this, don't forget to subscribe to the Lambda Test channel. Um, each week, uh, we publish uh, many videos on the channel. Uh, all of them are really detailed and awesome. Also uh, check the Lambda Test blog because uh, this is one of my favorite test automation blogs uh, because they really uh, you know, spend a lot of time to create really detailed articles about the topics that we are talking uh, on the YouTube channel. And um, in this last video, Actually, it wasn't initially part of the program. However, uh, we are reading your comments, right? And uh, some of you wanted for me to uh, create a video about uh, test reporting and analysis. It isn't really connected to Selenium 4, but we decided to put it uh, as a bonus to this particular series. So this is what we are going to talk about right now. Uh, and. Um, Keep in mind that since I'm going to talk about many different uh, tools, I'm going to give you a high level or your, uh, about them and what are the concept the prompts. Uh, I'm going to show you maybe three or four uh, more detailed examples and uh, mention a little bit about the configuration. But since you know over time uh, there are many updates and uh, these changes, I'm not going to focus that much about how to configure it exactly because, as I said, uh, on the blog, there are really detailed articles. On my personal blog also, I wrote about such of these tools in details. And uh, it isn't really so that important how you can configure it, right? 
once you know that you want to use the tool because it's just step-by-step -step, um, execution of the configuration, right? Uh, but I know that one of the missing resources out there online is actually, uh, you know, how to, uh, to figure out which of these tools or combination of them to use. Um, so I decided uh, to focus uh, and first, I, I'm going to start with my four top ways uh, to analyze test results and uh, look into the reports. And later, um, I'm going to show you different other tools. Uh, my four tools that uh, I prefer, uh, the first one is Allure. Allure is more of a report than really an application for capturing the results. The same goes with extent report that it's popular in Java. Um, and the other two, um, maybe the open source one, uh, it's called report portal. Um, it's a little nice, it's a little bit, uh, it takes much more resources like, uh, like machines uh, to, you know, to run it and uh, to maintain it, but it's nice. And maybe from technical perspective uh, and uh, people from my teams, they prefer to actually use the cloud results. Like for example, if we, uh, in some of our projects, we use Lambda tests and there, we are just using uh, the results there, right? Uh, but, uh, you know, from management perspective, sometimes it's nice to have some charts, etc. cetera. Uh, so, um, Let's first show you uh, some examples, right? So about the Allure, Allure, uh, you know, here and there, uh, before I was a fan of them, right now, part of their services are not working because of the, you know, the war, the war between Ukraine and Russia. And here, some of their websites are cannot open, right? Even their demo website, I usually show their demo website. And it's up to you whether to use it or not. Um, yeah, in order to install it, you can go uh, just type Allure documentation. Uh, it's really, it's, uh, really easy. Uh, it's uh, installed through Scoop. Scoop is a Windows manager uh, that basically from common line you can install any tool you will require java and um, basically after it uh, if you go here into documentation to junit5 you will see that you will need a, a few dependencies here their documentation i really struggled for a few hours to to make it work uh, because it's a bit uh, outdated uh, but uh, as i said uh, maybe this is because of the conflict right now. Uh, so you need uh, first the dependency regarding, because you will need some annotations in the code that I, I'm going to show you in a minute. And then you need to install, um, as you can see, uh, again, they use this Maven Shure, uh, Surefire plugin, and they put some argument lines there in order to uh, generate some files. Basically the whole tool uh, it doesn't have actually a database, but is generating, um, let me see whether I, I will find it. But yeah, but it's generating, no matter whether this is uh, uh, .NET or Java, it's generating all of these uh, JSON files, and this is how it keeps the data. And then from common line, you need to, you know, navigate to the folder, uh, open it from here, then, uh, basically, you need to say Allure, uh, generate the report. Then it will generate this folder here, Allure report. And then you need to say Allure, open this report, and it will bring uh, like a portable web server and it will open the report. Um, the problem with it is that actually um, it's not really an HTML file, you know. Uh, you need to have Allure installed uh, to be, uh, you know, you need to, every time you need to open the common line to uh, generate the report. Uh, and let me now uh, show you in the code, I already installed the 
the dependencies, right? Uh, as I said, with uh, the, the Allure dependency, uh, you will get different uh, annotations like this. This is a meta information that you can uh, basically group your tests uh, in particular epic feature suite. Uh, you can link, uh, for example, book reports. You can attach uh, different files uh, like uh, images or videos. Um, and yeah, basically the only thing that you need is, uh, as we already saw, this dependency uh, about the allure and then some plugins here in order to be able to execute them. And based on the annotations here, um, you will get a report like this. Again, as you can see, it's uh, based on my dynamic IP here. Uh, it will run on your local host. And afterwards, you have charts like this. As you can see, I already grouped them by feature, by suite. Uh, you can uh, have different categories based on the books. Uh, and you have a filtering here. Uh, for example, you can view only the failures. Uh, you will get a stack trace like this. You have tags based on the categories you put. Uh, if there are some images, etc., you will see them here. And if for some reason you retry the tests, uh, you will see them there. If you uh, run um, the, the tests a few times uh, in the same folder, which it depends uh, which continuous integration tool you use, probably we will have uh, here a history, but probably after the 10th time, it will be cleared. Um, and here is another example from uh, actually the test, the test driven, uh, test driven test that I created. Um, you can change the names, you can see the times. That's fine. Uh, you have charts, but again, this is really just like an HTML report, like a simple website. Keep in mind that uh, recently I found out that they actually. This is their free tool and uh, they offer some cloud integrations that are paid. But again, uh, my goal here is just to present to you the free options. If you, as you know, open source, it's not really free because you need to pay for the machines to host it yourself. So you have to you know, make your own calculations, which is best for you. But yeah, they, they uh, basically four years ago, they, uh, created a company and uh, they started to sell this tool after a few years that it was open sourced. Um, so yeah, this was the first tool. Uh, I here included some images from, uh, uh, actually we use it uh, for uh, my open source framework, Bellatrix. And here uh, I just added a few images with more tests. I grouped them based on the different controls that I had. Uh, as you can see, more numbers there. Uh, and here I group them by features uh, of the, you know, because we have different controls like anchor button, uh, table, whatever. And then each of them had to support different other features of the framework, like whether we can extend it or not. And here I de decided to group the features by these stories. And as you can see here, uh, if we continue with the grouping, we have much more, it's really nice. I, I like it because it's, you know, colorful and it's well grouped. Uh, also keep in mind that they provide plugins for Jenkins. Um, uh, here are the images, they have a plugin and it's really easy as a post action. You can, um, you know, when you run your tests, for example, genuine tests, then you can import uh, the results as a, a Lua report. And then at the end, uh, yeah, you need to provide the path because this Allure results will be generated. This folder will be generated every time when you uh, execute the tests through Maven. And then afterwards, uh, left uh, at the bottom left, uh, you will find this Allure uh, report link. 
and you will get the same thing but inside Jenkins, which is nice because you won't need to every time generate the report yourself. Uh, the next tool that I'm going to show you, it's called uh, Report Portal. And Report Portal is actually completely open source. Um, here it is, Report Portal IO. Uh, it's built by Palm. Uh, it's really, uh, it's Docker based. So uh, when we go to install, you will see that you can deploy it in your local Docker or Kubernetes. Uh, so I deployed it to my Docker. Keep in mind that uh, we use it in production and there, uh, because the whole idea of the report portal is that it's full-fledged test report application uh, really hosted uh, on your web server. Uh, and it needs, because it, it's built on top of many different technologies and it has many containers as you saw. Um, from my observation, you need at least machine with four CPUs and eight gigabytes of RAM uh, to support it. So this is not cheap, no matter the cloud. Uh, but again, this report portal solution, uh, probably you have one server for all of your teams that you're going to publish. Uh, you have different dashboards for the different teams and different types of tests. No matter whether this is these are UI tests, integration tests, unit tests, API tests, no matter, right? Um, the installation is uh, quite easy. Uh, I actually in the past created an article about it. Uh, again, no matter the configuration is almost identical, no matter whether this is .NET or Java. Um, basically, with curl, you need to uh, download basically this Docker UML, you can find it on GitHub. And then it's just one simple command, Docker compose, report portal, create, that's it. And then afterwards uh, on port 8080, um, you can log in with these two credentials. You can check the official documentation. And uh, I actually already did that. And as you can see, this is full-fledged. Uh, application i really like uh, you know uh, it's really configurable you can create different dashboards like this um, you can add custom widgets shared widgets there are many of them like uh, how many tests failed uh, based on the grouping whether it's product book automation book system issue to uh, system issue uh, of the test environment whether you need to investigate it whatever, right? Also, you can export it uh, with the print option. You can save it as a PDF and send it to your managers. So it's really nice. It has a full screen mode, uh, which again is really nice, uh, for example, to display it on a TV that you have in your office, right? We, we did that. Um, you can see the failed test cases trend, uh, overall statistics count, Many, many different things. I'm not going to you know, drill down right now because there are many, many of them. I uh, Also, when you go to the project settings, it has integrations. You can integrate it with Jira or different test case management systems. Uh, also, it has a really nice auto analysis feature, sort of machine learning, basically based on your uh, you know, on analysis and marking of different uh, tests that failed. Uh, the next time it can predict uh, whether this was a real bug or not. Uh, and uh, also you can create different patterns here for this analysis. Uh, I actually created demo data uh, in order to show you this uh, chart, but I also, um, I also uh, run a few launches with uh, different tests here. To be honest, uh, here you need to drill down uh, many times uh, based on your um, tree of packages. Uh, and you need many clicks here to, to see the actual test, which is for me, it's a little bit annoying. Even when, when you have this breadcrumb here or the secondary navig navigation. Um, but it's really complex, it's really nice, especially if you run, for example, Cucumber test or Specfall, BDD style, uh, you will see the works here. 
you will see the screenshots, the attachments, the history, and everything. Also, you can save different filters uh, for you to easier find different test cases and groupings based on categories, tags, whatever. Uh, so yeah, it's nice. And as I said, you have different dashboards here and it's really easy to set up. However, keep in mind that uh, in production, we had some problems with, uh, because it's real time, meaning that um, compared to, for example, uh, Allure, which is, you know, the report is generated at the end of the run. Here, if you run it uh, natively, basically it has listeners to the different uh, CLI tools. And when one test is complete, passed or failed, no matter, uh, it will call the API and it will be published immediately here. So real time you will see while your tests are running. However, from what I notice, it really depends on your web server. Uh, this slow down a little bit the execution. Uh, th there is an option uh, because it's really, they have really nice API. You have the option to just upload the test result file uh, at the end, which is fine. And the second issue here was when there is a new version of the report portal, it was really hard to you know update them separately. Sometimes it took like, day or two for someone to update and migrate all the data. Uh, and sometimes, of course, because it's open source, they release some uh, breaking changes, right? Uh, so this is a problem. Uh, regarding the integration, uh, really, you can check their website. Basically, they need this report portal properties here in the resources folder. You need to point here, uh, the IP address uh, and the port to, to the API. Then uh, from the settings uh, here uh, for your account here, uh, you can go here and just copy authentication uh, token. And uh, later on with this authentication token, you are going to authenticate to the API so that we can uh, use it. You don't need to put any annotations here, which is really nice. Uh, however, uh, as uh, you can find out in their documentation, uh, you will need a few dependencies here. Again, uh, the dependencies here, and then some plugins. But again, you can just copy paste them from the documentation, that's it. And this report portal properties. Um, the next tool that I want to show you uh, is called extent report. An extent report is, um, especially in the Java world, uh, maybe it's one of the most popular, really simple uh, reports. It's much more like Allure. Again, like them, they have paid version. Um, and here I created one extent report. Basically, this is just a nicer, uh, HTML report, as you can see, I just open it, which is, for me, it's better than the lure because, for example, if you just want to send this over email uh, to your manager or QAs, it's much easier. Uh, actually, in the paid version, they have email reporter as well. Uh, but this is just the community edition, the, the free one. And uh, if there is an error, you're going to see, to see it here. Uh, you cannot uh, different steps as I did here. Uh, the problem with it, uh, here you can see the differences between professional and community. As you can see, they have advanced reporter here that it's uh, part of the professional and the email reporter. Um, maybe if you have more advanced framework and uh, for example, in our framework that we use at work that it's open source, uh, we can create different plugins and um, basically execute uh, some logic after particular actions. And then probably this will make the integration with the extent report easier. Um, here I created, by the way, you can download the whole source code. Uh, you can find it in the description. It's already on GitHub. Um, 
but again, just try to do it yourself. Just check the documentation here. My goal is just to give you an overview. Um, yeah, for the extent report, again, following their documentation, you need uh, in the POM XML a few, a few dependencies here. And um, again, a few plugins, that's it. However, um, again, there is a good documentation uh, if we check it here, uh, not this tab, just give me a second. Uh, yeah, when, when you check their documentation here for version five, because version four was deprecated, um, you can create nodes. The node is basically, uh, you know, the particular steps to create something like a BDD style, behavior driven style of the tests. Um, here you can find the different examples. I found that they have uh, for the extent framework, they have an example from Java and I basically get it from here. Um, and then uh, maybe the simplest way to uh, integrate it like I did uh, was that you need this, we, you need to create uh, an object from this extent reports. Um, I did it here before all tests. Then I create this extend Spark reporter. Um, and uh, you say where you want to save the HTML file. Uh, HTML file. And uh, you need to call flush in order to create the file at the end. And uh, basically here is where we uh, create the different tests, basically you need to uh, call it inside the tests. This is why I said that uh, basically if your framework supports, you know, uh, ways to execute logic uh, before the test, after the test, before each action, etc., it's much clearer way to do it. For me, this is a deal breaker, but this is personally for me because basically you are missing the uh, reporting or the logging with the test itself uh, and it's making the test much unreadable. But anyway, I just wanted to show you. Uh, so here uh, we need to call extend create test, the name of the test. Every time since this is uh, data-driven tests, check out the JUnit, uh, my JUnit course on the Lambda test channel if you miss it. Uh, but this is a way how this particular test will be executed for each of these values here, which is which are different technologies. And uh, basically, yeah, we are going to create uh, one node with this particular uh, name of the test, and then to create the different particular steps, whether we navigate it or not, uh, is here. So I'm saying uh, given, which is again, you can miss that, but this is uh, given when then, uh, BDD style. Uh, so you need to say given class, uh, what is the step? We navigate to this particular page then, um, and we're opening this particular technology. And here I'm mentioning whether the step uh, passed or failed. Um, and then in the end, if some of these steps uh, failed, uh, I, I just failed the test itself. Otherwise, uh, I am passing it. As you can see, it's making the test much more unreadable than uh, I wanted. Uh, but again, if you have a framework and you integrate it, maybe it's fine. But however, I prefer the other two more. Um, and to be honest, my maybe the way I used to uh, work more when I need to troubleshoot tests, I really just, you know, uh, I just, uh, for example, as I said, if my tests run on Lambda test or another tool, I open it, for example, here in the uh, automation, check the builds, I open the particular test that I want to troubleshoot, and here I have everything that I need. I mean, I have the video, I have the commands. Uh, if we enable the networking, I will see the networking, I will see the logs. This is what I want, right? Uh, and uh, if you use the new hyper execute uh, runner, 
uh, you will also find here the actual stack trace. Uh, it's a pity here if you want, uh, actually it's possible to have the, um, the actual stack trace, but you need to load it yourself. Uh, I think uh, somewhere, maybe in, in the troubleshooting video, I mentioned it. Uh, I don't remember exactly, but I think there you can find it. And here in the exceptions, you, you will find the actual stack trace if you log it yourself, because there is a way how you do it. But yeah, basically this is my favorite way because I'm much more technical, right? I need the technical details and uh, I want to get them fast. Uh, so here the filtering for me, it's completely enough. And now uh, I prepared, um, you know, uh, other slides here to show you other solutions. Uh, I will uh, quickly explain other solutions. For example, uh, when no matter whether my project is .NET or Java, um, you can do it both ways in Azure and Jenkins. But another perfect place to analyze the test results is just go to your continuous integration jobs, right? because this is the way how we usually execute our tests. Uh, here in Azure DevOps, we can create dashboards like this. And then for each particular build, we have uh, simple widgets like this with numbers. And uh, we have a list of all tests, whether they failed or not. When I open the test, I see the actual uh, stack trace. Most of the time, I even don't need an actual video, right? Uh, maybe a problem with this approach is that um, maybe a thing that it's really nice, nice about Report Portal and other similar machine learning algorithms, uh, tools, uh, is that they group uh, the failures and uh, mark them. Um, because here, especially when you have 1000 tests, sometimes it's hard to uh, figure out when you have 100, Failures, I need to open them separately and uh, analyze them one by one. And uh, most of the time, for example, 20 of the tests failed with uh, the same error, right? Uh, and uh, I guess uh, the best tool out there should be able to group them and uh, do this and help us, right? But anyhow, this is good enough for me, uh, as I said. I use the combination between Azure and Lambda test, for example. Uh, but it's a matter of preference because I'm uh, really, you know, I'm just uh, parsing <laughs> uh, the, the stack trace here and I, I see it when I, I just see it, right? Uh, so yeah, here uh, we see the error message and the stack trace. And uh, if you build your framework in a way that basically the, the, the errors are meaningful, then probably you won't need such, uh, you know, advanced reporting. In Azure, it's e really easy and in most continuous integration systems, basically uh, the run of the test is actually just running the test from command line. And then we have one step that it's publishing with some kind of a plugin the results to the continuous integration job. Uh, so we have published steps here, no matter for .NET and for Java as well. It's the same thing about Jenkins, another maybe the most popular continuous integration uh, tool out there. You need to install the JUnit plugin. Then uh, you have a step after you uh, execute the test through Maven or AND. And uh, about, as you can see here, the Surefire report, just uh, publish the JUnit results. And after that, uh, based on the different builds, you will have link here with the latest test results. And similar to what I showed you in Azure DevOps, you can open the different tests and um, even you will have a history about them and uh, you will see like a chart about uh, the execution time over time. Just keep in mind that you need to be sure that uh, you're, um, you know, when you execute the tests, you're sure that you are executing them on the same test environment. Because you, if you start executing the same build on different environments, probably uh, this type of, you know, charts, uh, especially about the test execution time, uh, won't be true, right? So you need to be careful. This is not. This is true about any continuous integration system. 
Uh, another popular tool uh, in recent years is GitHub Actions. Uh, it's really straightforward how you can integrate it with uh, Java, Java with Maven. Then um, you need this, uh, again, UML file and you need to search the marketplace about this reporter. And after that, it's really more lightweight reporting. You will see like a summary about the test like this. And if there are failures, again, you will see like the exception message and the stack trace. And most of the times this is perfectly fine, especially uh, if inside of your framework, you use uh, a lot of uh, logging steps uh, with the information, this might be fine. Is the same with Bitbucket. Bitbucket, it's really similar to GitHub Actions. Again, you will see, as you can see here, you see the different tests and uh, the times when you click on the report, you will see the exception and the stack trace and many different logging steps if you use a logging framework there. And uh, I added a few images of different custom solutions. Uh, one such custom solution is uh, that we used in the past in one of my past companies. Uh, it's called Dashing, Dashing Dashboard. And we use it to show different builds that were uh, widely executed and they were di displaying this uh, on a TV in the office, which was nice. Uh, it's just, we use it as a visibility uh, for our uh, monitoring, uh, live monitoring tests. Another popular combination that some people used to prefer, I, I uh, get these images from uh, some articles that I found uh, online, uh, is Kibana plus Elasticsearch. You can create really nice dashboarding. Basically, Elasticsearch is like a big data, MongoDB based, uh, if I'm uh, not wrong, uh, database. Uh, or a tool, uh, and you can import data there. And uh, after that, with Kibana, you can configure dashboards and uh, even more advanced dashboards, and you can drill down there and you can see, uh, you know, uh, the different data there and analyze them. But again, this is just a custom written solution. Uh, we had uh, such combination like 10 years ago in one of my companies uh, to observe uh, some APIs. And it was nice, but again, you will need to code it everything yourself. Another thing that I used uh, while I was working on the open source framework I developed is Azure App Insights. Again, no matter whether it's Azure, uh, again, in Google and Amazon clouds, you have similar services there. Basically, uh, Azure App Insights, it's something like Google Analytics for applications. Uh, it's like a big data storage and uh, with SQLite uh, language, uh, you can uh, write queries to uh, visualize the results. Uh, you can filter the tests, etc. And actually uh, in the past, uh, it's nice because actually uh, we use it to get insights and analytics about our tests. For example, um, when you run your tests with continuous integration jobs, many of them, all of them are inserting the data inside the insights. Uh, what are the tests with what data we execute them on which environment, etc. with what they failed. And then with all of this different queries, you can later analyze the results and find, uh, for example, uh, particular uh, bugs in, in the framework that are, uh, because as I said, it's really extremely hard. For example, in Azure and Jenkins, you don't have like real filtering about the tests, especially between the builds. And here we can see like aggregated results from day to date, uh, for a particular exception, which is nice for uh, especially inside and finding books, right? But again, this is, um, you know, Azure App Insights, it's not really meant for to be like a test reporting or, or analysis, but it's like a general tool for uh, these insights for applications. But, you know, 
uh, system tests and UI tests and frameworks, etc. We are building applications, so it's fine to use such tools uh, in our work. Um, and then you can use uh, this is uh, uh, like a chatbot uh, that I developed in the past uh, that actually is generating a report uh, based on a, um, based on the run, and then actually it, it uh, used. Uh, AI and machine learning algorithm for uh, parsing the exceptions and uh, analyzing and grouping the tests based on the failures. Uh, and it was attaching the screenshots and videos in the cloud and then linking them here and creating these nice HTML reports. And then since it's a chatbot, it was, you know, it could connect to any chat platform and notify you about that the run is complete or there is a bug, whatever, right? So there are different chat solutions. This was uh, one that I developed for uh, our project. Um, and there are many other, uh, you know, plugins for popular continuous integration tools that you can uh, hook to, for example, Slack, because they have webhooks and you can integrate with it. So it's a nice way to get notified, not only by email. So here is the end of it. Thank you for uh, watching. If you have any questions, you can uh, ask them in the comments below. You can find me always on LinkedIn. Um, as I said, you can download the full source code. Don't forget to check the land test blog because there are many awesome articles there. And don't forget to get your certification and I hope to see you soon. Bye and take care.